Maya McGinnis is the president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. That is a bipartisan nonprofit group aimed at increasing awareness of budgetary and financial issues. She stresses how important it is for the U.S. to get its own fiscal house in order. I think the question stability, that point is such a key one, which is what we have is no stability right now because the U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path. We have been borrowing too much, but even more importantly, we're projected to continue to be borrowing too much in terms of it being sustainable, meaning our debt is going to grow faster than our economy. That doesn't work for anybody. And that has effects on everybody from citizens in this country who don't feel any connection to the debt to the global economy. And so it affects people in many ways, right? Here domestically, it has an effect on wages, it has effect on jobs, it has effect on the economic recovery, which isn't as fast as it should be. For businesses, small and large, there is no stability, there's no ability to plan, to invest, and have to medium or long-term plans. And then, of course, there's a ripple effect throughout the global economy because it's the U.S. We're still the safe haven. We're still a big economy. That has a profound effect on all the economies around the world. And if we could get our fiscal situation under control, that added stability would be a huge difference from the normal citizen here to economies around the world. So you want to be sent to Capitol Hill. Um, you mentioned something about the fact that when you look at the federal budget, okay, and people say, okay, we want to make cuts. The Democrats would argue they don't want to make certain cuts. And, and, and the Republicans, likewise, they don't want to do it. And then we end up in this stalemate. The businesses ultimately suffer, right, because they don't like the stability. What are the solutions being put on the table right now? So, I mean, I think you're absolutely right to bring up Republicans and Democrats. Because the biggest problem here, in addition to the debt, is the political gridlock in Washington, D.C. And this is holding up so many issues in the U.S., um, the debt has really, I think the debt's become symbolic of how broken Washington is in some ways. We know how to fix this problem. There was a commission a, a number of years ago called the Simpson-Bowles Commission, which basically laid out the most sensible framework. It's bipartisan. Many other groups have kind of mirrored that. And it says everything has to be on the table. We have to look at our health care programs that are going too fast, our pension programs that are growing because we're an aging society, and our tax code, which is a terrible tax code. It doesn't raise enough revenues, but the revenues that it raises, it raises in a wrong way that harms the economy, keeps the U.S. not being as competitive as we should. You look at all parts of the budget, sorry, including defense and other areas that we have, and probably one part that we don't do enough in investing. We're not investing enough right now. We should be re reprioritizing our budget. And bottom line, if something's important enough to do, we should be willing to pay for it. But what we need is two political parties that would actually compromise, that would work together instead of holding the whole system hostage. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. But you said something earlier about we're overspending. The budget isn't balanced. We're overborrowing. What makes this year or next year in terms of borrowing any different than any other year past? Because we always overborrow. Right. So the point is over overborrowing, when it becomes structural, when your entire budget is dependent on overborrowing, takes a long time to unwind or undo. You can't turn this ship around in a day. And what we are facing and heading towards pretty fast now is an, a population that's aging at such a rapid rate and plans to get its retirement and its health care all from the federal government. But guess what? We didn't fund these systems well enough. We didn't actually set aside the money. We spent much of the money that should be so, so there you, for those you programs. you want a more predictable uh, revenue. Alan Greenspan. And spending. I want people to know what they can expect. Right now, we've made promises that we can't keep. That's not fair to our population. If the Republicans take back the Senate in the midterm elections, does that make a difference? Um, you know, we'll have to see. But frankly, I think you can't fix this issue without bipartisanship. Now, you'd still have a Democrat in the White House. But what you need is the coalition of people who say, we have to deal with all parts of the budget. That means entitlements, which are retirement and health care programs, and revenues through the tax code. Both parties have to do something they don't want to do. If you have Republicans, people think, oh, they'll put in place kind of a Republican-only budget. It deals with entitlement. It deals with cutting spending. Guess what? Cutting spending and entitlement reform is hard. I think they would rather do that with Democrats working with them than they would alone. Just like I don't think Democrats would be all that comfortable raising taxes unless they had some Republican cover. The compromise and the bipartisanship make something as difficult as dealing with the debt a lot easier. I'm out of time, but I have one more question I want to ask you. Give me one thing that you're optimistic about when it comes to the federal budget. Well, I'm actually very optimistic about the resilience of the U.S. economy. I think it's an incredibly strong, innovative economy, which if we got the federal budget under control, and that will happen 
when there's real leadership on this issue, um, the economy could be uh, go gangbusters. What we could do in this country would be incredible. I am uh, hopeful that the midterm elections and more so even the 2016 presidential election won't be able to duck from this issue. We've done a lot of work to put it on the national agenda. The candidates will need to talk about it. And I think the citizens of this country know we need to make responsible changes. Hopefully the politicians will follow. Maya McGinnis, president of the nonprofit group for citizens responsible for a federal budget.